Recently I've been noticing a lot of videos on YouTube about the Godot engine and it gave me an idea to try and make my own game in it. Since most of the footage for this video ended up being me reading the documentation I decided to cut it down as much as I can and leave only the more interesting parts. As you can see, in the beginning I was just messing around, experimenting with the engine to get a little feel of how it works, and then I started reading the official documentation, which was very helpful. Now I knew that the Godot engine had its own programming language, but what I didn't know is that you can actually use C Sharp in Godot, which was a very pleasant surprise for me. Still, a lot of discussions and tutorials online are written in Godot's language, and C Sharp examples are a bit more scarce, which was kind of annoying, but translating between the two languages at least isn't very hard. I started this project by creating a cube for the player character. I wasn't sure how much time I would have to create proper models so I decided to just use the cubes for today and maybe come back and make the game prettier some other day. The player object consists of what are called nodes. The main node in this case is kinematic body which makes the player responsive to physics and I have two nodes as children. One is mesh instance which makes the player render on the screen, in this case as a cube and also a node called collision shape which allows the object to collide. I used the input system to detect if the player was holding the right or left arrow key and moved the player if he did. The function I used to move the player was move and slide which uses the game physics to move the player so that he would respond to the outside forces like collisions which wouldn't be possible if I was moving him manually by setting his position. For the map I decided to have a procedural generation to create the level real time as the game is played and I did this by generating a bunch of blocks and at first placing them at uh, a random y coordinate beneath the player. I later reworked the algorithm to generate the y values so that each value is similar to the last one. By doing this I made sure that the terrain was less chaotic and more natural and organic looking. What I ended up with was something kinda like the Minecraft terrain but only in one dimension. Then I stretched the blocks and made them taller so that they would cover the space all the way to the bottom of the screen and I also expanded the algorithm so that it would generate the blocks above the player as well. This made it look more like a cave which was my initial idea. The way I wanted to make this game look was like a submarine swimming through uh, an underwater cave. To make it able to steer up and down I added some controls to rotate the player along the z-axis which should make him change direction. The only problem with the player movement was that he was always moving straight to the right no matter how he was rotated. This was because he was handling the movement globally, looking at the world uh, space instead of his local space. After putting my move direction vector through this little function, I was able to translate the direction so that it would look at it locally. This made the player move in different directions based on how he was rotated. I added collision boxes to the cave blocks so that the player could collide with the walls and I made it so that the game restarts if the player hits a wall. Since in the first day of learning I didn't get much time to mess around with the UI, 
I decided uh, not to have a game over screen for now, but I may come back and add, that, add one later. Since the game was very boring and easy at this point, I created some enemies, which for now are just red boxes generated around the level, which also restart the game on collision. The way the enemies are generated is after every wall block is generated, it has a chance to also generate an enemy between the top and bottom wall. To make the game more fun I also added the ability to shoot enemies. At first I was having some problems with the bullets since they were colliding with the player and restarting the game as soon as I would shoot. Uh, this is where I decided to take advantage of layer masks which tell the engine which objects should collide and which should pass through each other. Now the bullets were not colliding with the player anymore but they were colliding with each other and they were making these funny patterns. After I made it so that the bullets could not only collide with the walls and the enemies, I got something closer to what I was after. The only thing left to do with the bullets was to add some cooldown, since right now the bullets were being spawned every frame, and because they were so close to each other, they were coming out as these connected lines. After adding some cooldown, I got the desired result. The bullets were now being shot less often, but they were only traveling straight ahead, horizontally. I modified their movement the same way I modified the player movement and made it so that the bullets were traveling locally based on their rotation. To make the bullets actually useful, I made the enemies disappear after colliding with a bullet. The last thing I had a little time to implement was some basic UI. I made the player ammo limited and added a display showing how much ammo the player has left. I also made the player gain a couple of bullets after killing an enemy. This way the player had limited bullets and could not spam them randomly, but also couldn't run out of ammo if he was being careful. I also added score to the game, which basically increased as the player was covering more distance from the beginning of the game. 